Oh, my friends, my friends. As you know, I do outrageous as the standard. <laughs> but this way exceeds that. Look at this now. This is an eyeball. You see what they're doing? They're focusing in on this little spot. We come up over here and we zoom in on it and look what it looks like. It looks like a bunch of little pixels. And then they zoom in again and they say, look, you got all your different colors and your sodium, calcium, potassium. Somehow it turns these different colors on. This is just too much. I can't, I can't even believe it myself. Where do you see this? Okay, a few years ago I got these pictures from Darlene Irvine. And I, I, that's the only communication that I've ever had with her. And she sent me a couple pictures, and I looked at them. And at the time, I really didn't know what to think. But this was a, this is a giant eyeball. Where do you see this? Now, I just showed you before the little pixels. Where do you see this? There's the pixels. <laughs> There's the pixels running out through the... Uh, I, I mean, come on. This is just unbelievable. At first, I when I, the, I I really don't remember to be honest with you. I get so many things, but uh, you know, I've never even thought about what that could be until I just decided. Well, I better really get into some real close shots. And the reason I did that was because I got a video from my friend Gil Headley, who is an anatomist, and he was doing all the nerves that come out of the manula oblongata. And I was going to show that the Mitchell Hedges skull is, is real, 100% real. And I also have stuff here that is, has turned clear, and this was tendon. And that is actually the abrupt transition. <laughs> I show these all the time, the abrupt transition. You see that perfectly straight across? And you see all this there? That's blue, that, I mean, uh, that's bloody glue. That holds these transitions together. And we'll look at this probably later in the microscope, but not, not at this moment. But anyway, um, let's take a look at the Mitchell Hedges skull. Now, this is absolutely, there's no, really no question whatsoever, this is real. And it turned into quartz crystal in a certain condition. I can't tell you how the condition arises, but what it does is invades all of the, the soft tissues and even the teeth and everything. I mean, look at them. I, when I first look at this, I have to admit, I said, that I can't be real. Well... You see that? That's the lip turned up, and it was laying on its nose. And the brain in the back, this little bulb here, went forward and left a cavity back here. But this is the key. This is how I know for sure, 100%, it's real. These are nerve fibers. Nerve fibers are coated with special collagens to keep them separated, just like insulation and wires. Totally different preservation on nerve fibers than is in normal tissue. It's a it's a insulation. It's a, a membrane that that does not get turned into completely, you know, clear um, quartz. It does. It it has these fibers running through it, and you, there's no question. You can see the fibers. You see that. That didn't, nobody put those inside there. You see this back here? You see this? You see this ball move forward? You see this? Up against the face? Push back? This is 100% this is real. Plus, the jaw comes off of this, just like yours would. Now, it, I can't explain, again, the conditions that existed. But nobody's been able to explain this. And, oh, it's just somebody carved it. They were just having fun playing games you know, trying, you know, of course, they chasing animals to eat and, and doing this at the same time. <laughs> and this is, this is the kind of stuff. Now, if you look at this, and we will in a the microscope, there is a ton of layers in here. All right, people don't know about all the layers. Wait till I show you the brain with the layers in it, because I got, I got so much stuff. People send me things. Where do you see this? All right, check this out. This is a brain, believe it or not, and I'll show you this. You see these little variegations that are little, you know, layering? You see it? 
That's what's in your brain. And, and when these things harden up and turn into mud fossils, you see much more detail than you do as an anatomist. They're, they're layered in there for some reason. I don't know why. Are they different regions of the brain? Not sure. That's where the tongue was. This is the esophagus. You see, if you look real close, you can see the tongue, and you can actually see the muscles of the tongue in that strip running down. You see the little stripes running this way here? That's your, and this is your esophagus. It runs down into your throat and so forth. You know, that's your throat. Now, this is the soft palate up in the back, if you take your tongue and twist it right up back, that's there what that is. Now, this was when it was in situ, right, right when it was found. Then they took it back and cleaned it up. Now, I, I don't remember where I got this from. I can't, I get so many things, and this was five years ago. This was back in uh, 2017, November 2017. Now, here's the brain, let's see, all right, this is the same brain. And this is after they cleaned it out. You see, these are all where all the neuron fibers are running through here. Those are fibers. Those aren't just little wrinkles and so forth. And again, this is also all nerve fibers. I mean, it's just stunning the amount of, of intricacy in this stuff. All right, here's your gun. All right, this could have been where an eye attached. I'm not sure. I'm trying to think of... Anyway, it's um, something attached there, an ear or an eye or something. What do we got here? There it is again, a little closer look at it. But you see these, these the, all of those are, are fibers, nerve fibers and so forth in this thing. It's just stunning and the the la the layers of the brain when it was first found before it was all cleaned up that's where you can really see the layering you see it down there that's that's not just by accident something is different in these layers there's some kind of a membrane that separate them they they don't do this unless there is a reason for it and there's some reason in the brain, and the brain is not very well understood right now at all. And that's how I started this, because a friend of mine, Gil Headley, was doing his, his video about the, the vagus nerve coming off of the medulla oblongata, which is at the base of your, your brain, where it connects to your spinal cord. And, and that tipped me off to start digging around back into these old pictures because this is five six years ago I, got, I had all this stuff and I really didn't pay that much attention to I had so many things going on at that time too now it's sort of settled out to where I can really get back and dig deep into each one of these situations that I, I sort of I, I tried to dig as deep as I could when I was doing it but it was all brand new it's still all brand new very few people understand this at all I mean really very few so it's got it. We got to start. We got to get it out there somehow. All right. You remember before I said there was an eye or an ear or something? It's an ear. Here's your throat. Right to the side of your throat is where that ear enters. Right there. That's that red spot we saw on the side of the brain after they cleaned it up. Now, as you probably know, very few people understand mud fossils, and they certainly don't understand them on the level that I do. I've, I've, I know exactly what happens in this chemistry. I know that in most conditions what causes them to turn into mud versus um, different types of, like even Mitchell Hedges, the, the quartz. I, I basically understand the process now, nucleophilic substitution, invasion, entering groups, leaving groups, stability, all that stuff, and what you end up with. Now, this is a... A head that was, uh, you can see this nose is pushed right over and everything. This is the blood, the black and the red blood. Everybody that knows mud fossils now understands this. This was ended up being a real problem. I was heavily involved in this. This is not my head. This head belongs to um, Arlie Caudill, discovered it, and Jim Burchill and Arlie and I did the research on it, and I 
stuck my big nose in here and said, oh yeah, that's real, I can guarantee you that's real, and he did all kinds of stuff. We tried to do this, and he, and he ended up having a CAT scan down in Texas, at the University of Texas in Austin, the worst experience I've ever had in my entire life. It ended up going legal, and um, Yale was just as bad. They, not a single... Not a single question, not a single, they wouldn't look at it. Nobody would look at it. This is what drove me off the edge. This is what made me go completely over. You know, I, I had expected them to take over on this. Absolutely didn't happen. I said, I'm not walking away. They said, well, have a nice day. See you later. I said, well, I guess you will. <laughs> and now it's later. You know, the other thing I want to point out is how I got involved in this is I saw this on TV. Scott Walter saw this, and I think it was less than one minute from the time he initially saw it the first time. He said, absolutely no question whatsoever. It's a carved standstone head, never been alive. Totally wrong. And that was from the History Channel, and that was on TV, and I, I went after him, and we went back and forth a couple times, and finally he said, I'm the expert, you're nothing, get lost. And he's never apologized, and I deserve an apology it's from you, Scott Walter, and the History Channel, and so does Jim and Arlie. This was all, did, we did everything that was expected of us, spent a lot of money and time, you know, and I, I felt very bad that I got involved and, and brought these guys into this rabbit hole of denial. Not only by academia, but Scott Walter, too. Refused to, and over the course of years, I've been after him to say, you know, Scott, stand up, do something here, man. You got a voice? Let's hear it. Dead silence. All right, that, that one showing the actual pixels inside, I believe that was from Darlene Irvine. And I, like, again, this goes back several years, and I, I'm not sure, to be perfectly honest with you, but I believe that was it. And I would love to, for whoever has that eye, if they could comment, would be nice. We could take a little look at it, maybe even do a Zoom meeting about it. This is um, from Tish Egerton. She found an eye, too, and um, she found a whole batch of stuff. Within 15 minutes of taking the Mud Fossil 15-minute You Find It Challenge, and she did. My feeling is that the university should have paid attention, done their job. They didn't. Everybody's going to have to be retrained. All the core curriculum is nonsense. Specialties, yes, that's fine. Core curriculum, they wasted all their money. They should be refunded, and not by the government, by the institutions for not doing their fiduciary duty and paying attention to mud fossils and electron flood theory. All right, I'm just going to leave it at this. Every single thing that was taught has to be retaught. Our history is wrong, obviously, if the things I'm showing are true, and they are true. Velikowski was correct. If you read him, you'll understand we have been just totally misled. And denialist education, not learning, you know, proving that you're wrong, proving that you're right. It's denialists, and it's all because of peer review. And it's, it's just to keep them in power. They won't allow the kind of things that I'm showing I show the particles that they're looking for. I show that we can actually probably create free energy. And it's not allowed because it's, it's, uh, it takes away from their status. Everything has to change. Our history is wrong. Our geology is wrong. This is wrong. You know, they, they, their interpretation of subatomic particles is totally wrong. The Bohr model is wrong. The new model is right here. Hold on. I will get it for you in a minute. Right there. This is the new model. Electron flood theory. This is the only particles that exist, and we can separate them. I've shown this over and over and over. If we don't do something soon, I, I just don't know what to do anymore. I can't believe they can get away with this for so long. Absolutely stunning how intransigent the educational system is. It, it's, it's uh, you know, what can you say? It's a disgrace.